In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And with with your your spirit. spirit. Welcome to everyone joining us uh, remotely for this uh, celebration of Mass here at St. Boniface Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. And as we once again, uh, we uh, gather even though we're at a distance, uh, watching this in different places at different times, but we unite our minds and our hearts to this celebration of the Eucharist. We open our ears and our minds and our hearts to hear God's word and to receive his grace. And so brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to show us how to live. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you reached out to sinners with care and compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. 
and they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God. His tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, Let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let Let all all the earth earth cry out to to God God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all all the earth earth cry out to to God God with joy. joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we hear today from St. Peter in his first letter telling us to always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. So I guess the question for each of us today is, what is the reason for our hope? And as I was reflecting on these readings this week, I found myself asking myself that question. What is the reason for my hope? There were three answers that came to mind, and none of them are earth-shattering or, or new, really. I think they're all pretty simple and perhaps obvious. But I think they were, they were things that I needed to remind myself of this week, and so I want to share them with you. So what are the reasons for my hope? Well, it's number one, Jesus is alive. Number two, Jesus is Lord. And three, Jesus loves me. I have hope because Jesus is alive. And Jesus' resurrection was not just a kind of an isolated fluke of a miracle. It wasn't something that happened only for Jesus' benefit. Jesus tells us today in the gospel that I live and you will live. The Jesus' resurrection means that death does not have the final say, that God has broken down the wall of sin that has separated us from him, and he's made it possible for us to share eternal life with him. In baptism, we are buried with Christ so that we may also rise with him. Sin has been defeated. And death has lost its sting because Jesus is alive. I have hope also because Jesus is Lord. That means that I know that my ultimate fate does not depend on the government or the economy or a vaccine or anything else. Whatever happens in the world around us and in our lives, I know that my life is in God's hands. As the Psalms remind us, some trust in chariots and horses, but we in the name of the Lord. Finally, I have hope because Jesus loves me. He has not forgotten or abandoned us. He's with us just as he was with his disciples while their boat was being tossed about in the storm at sea. And his love is, it's not just words, it's not just emotion, it's action. He loved us to the point of death, and he loves us still, desiring nothing but our good and our happiness. 
which are only found in communion with him. So I'm able to have hope on the days when I remember it because I know that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is Lord, and that Jesus loves even me. But you know, as this pandemic has gone on longer and longer, and as the number of uh, people that we know that are, have been affected by the virus continues to increase, as the emotional and the financial strains on people grow more and more intense, you know, I don't think it's any surprise really that we've, we've begun to see people kind of start acting out in frustration, looking for someone within, that they can pin the blame on and you know, name-calling, and assuming the worst of anyone that we disagree with, uncritically accepting as true anything that happens to reinforce our opinion, no matter how ridiculous it may be, these things have sadly become more and more the norm in our society. And so that's why I think it's important that we keep reading in First Peter, to read the rest of that verse, that he wrote, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear. I think that everyone would agree that our world could do with a lot more gentleness and reverence these days. And as Christians, that's what we are called to be examples of. We are called to rise above hostility and bullying and fear that so many have given into. We are called to witness to a better way of responding to the challenges that we face and, and the disagreements over how to resolve them. And again, I think of just three ways, three examples of how Christ invites us and empowers us and commands us to do that. We're called to act with patience and with wisdom and with charity. Now, you know, it's often been said that it's a dangerous thing to ask God for patience because he will give you plenty of chances to use it. <laughs> and I think that all of us, we've all found plenty of those chances to learn how to be patient during this time. And I don't know about you, but I know for me, I've, well, I've taken better advantage of some of them than of others. But I think sometimes we can forget that patience is kind of a two-way uh, two street in, a, in some ways. We're, we're called to be patient with uh, other people who may be frustrating or annoying or inconvenient or whatever. Yes but we also have to be patient with ourselves. Um, earlier this week, Father Jeff uh, shared a video with uh, some members of the, the staff at St. Patrick. It was just kind of a, a commercial that was just a reminder telling us that it's okay to not be okay. You know, it's okay to feel angry or worried or cooped up or sad or anything else that you may be feeling because of this unique and, and difficult situation that we're, we find ourselves in. See, when we give ourselves permission to not have to be perfect all the time, to not have to feel perfect all the time, well, I think that makes it easier then for us to remember that everyone else is struggling too. Even that person at the grocery store or on TV or whoever. As Christians, we're also called to act with wisdom. You know, one of the things my dad often told me and my brother was that God gave us a brain because he meant for us to use it. We know that God is the one who created and who, who ordered our universe. We know that there can be no conflict between truths of faith, rightly understood, and truths of science rightly understood. We know that God has given us reason. He has given us that gift to be able to recognize what is true and real, no matter what our 
subjective feelings about it may be. You know, we know that you know, two plus two always equals four, no matter how much in some situations we may really wish it were five. And similarly, we know that, well, the coronavirus doesn't really care whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or how much you hate wearing a mask or how much you just really, really, really want to believe that conspiracy theory that your brother's friend's hairdresser shared on Facebook. You know, Jesus, he told his disciples that we are to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, which means that we are called to choose our actions based on reason and reality, not irrational impulses. Finally, as disciples of Jesus, we're called to respond to this and to every situation with love. One of my favorite passages from the New Testament, St. Paul tells the Colossians, above all, clothe yourselves in love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Love is what reminds us that we are all in this together, that our choices affect not just ourselves, but everyone who is around us. I think as Americans, we're, we're brought up, taught to think only about our rights. I think sometimes it's easy for us to forget that with every right, there comes an accompanying responsibility to know how to exercise those rights in the proper way. As Christians, we look to the example of Christ. We look to Christ who didn't concern himself with getting his rights, but with what we needed. Who responded to us based not on what we deserve, but on what is best for us. See, we have a hope that the world cannot offer and that so many people today are desperate to hear. It's a hope that rests on Jesus' words that I live and you will live. Jesus is alive. Jesus is Lord. Jesus loves me. It's simple. It's obvious. But it's true. And sometimes we just need to remind ourselves of that. Because we have that hope within us, we're able to face each day with patience and with wisdom and with love. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, him all things were made. For us, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us lift up our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, who has promised to pour out on us the gift of His Spirit. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and for all bishops around the world, our good shepherds, may God give them the courage and the strength that they need to guide us on the right path. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and world leaders, those that are charged with leading this effort against the coronavirus, that they will be given wisdom, that they will understand that their focus should be on the common good so that we can work our way through this difficult time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all the people of St. Boniface, although we may be dispersed, that we will realize that we are one in the Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those affected by the coronavirus, those who have had the virus and have died, those who are recovering as we speak, for frontline workers in their heroic work, for those who have lost their jobs and have fear and uncertainty regarding the future, that they realize that God is always with them, not to face their perils alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For the prayers in our book of intentions, for those prayers on our prayer line, and for those prayers we keep in the silence of our hearts. And for Jerry Camfield, whom we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers we have offered you, those we have voiced, those we offer in the silence of our hearts. We entrust them to you, knowing that you will answer them in accordance with your most gracious will. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise for the glory and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the, sa the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Boniface, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with with your your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy worthy that you should should enter under under my my roof, roof, but only only say the word, word, and my my soul soul shall shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you again, alleluia, and your heart will rejoice, alleluia, alleluia.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me. That with your saints, I may ever be praising you eternally. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, let's see, what do we have for announcements today? Uh, I don't think there's really anything going on. Oh, except that we will be opening the doors for the public celebration of Mass next Sunday. So there is that. Uh, Archbishop Kurtz has uh, announced that parishes may resume uh, the public celebration uh, of Mass uh, if they're prepared and, and, and it's safe for them to do so. And so next Sunday, May 24th, uh, we will begin uh, again, having, uh, having Mass uh, publicly uh, here at St. Boniface. Um, we will begin uh, only having Mass at 11 o'clock. Uh, so we're, we're doing that uh, just because we need to make sure that we're able to, uh, we're able to properly um, uh, sanitize the church uh, before each Mass. And so having to do that between the 8.30 and the 11 o'clock uh, Masses, we didn't want to try to commit to do that before we know exactly what kind of a, a process that's going to be and how long that's going to, that's going to take. So for, uh, for right now, we're going to, uh, we'll only be having Mass at 11 o'clock, but we'll kind of evaluate as we go and figure out if we're able to, uh, to return to the 8.30 Mass as well. Uh, and we'll be sending you more details uh, about this during the week, and we'll have instructions and things when you, when you get here next Sunday. Uh, but we will have to be observing all the, the uh, precautions around social distancing and wearing a mask and all of those things that we've, we've, we've grown used to um, or beginning to grow used to. Uh, we'll be need, need to be doing those, doing those here as well. So there will definitely be some changes to the way that we're used to doing things here, um, but we'll do that to, to, keep, uh, to keep each other and to keep everyone else uh, safe. I know that many of you may still not feel safe, may not be ready to, to come back to, to Mass yet, and that's okay. Uh, Archbishop Kurtz has extended the dispensation from the Sunday obligation. So if you're sick, if you're uh, caring for someone who's sick, or if you just feel vulnerable, uh, if, if, you, if you feel that it's not a good idea for you to come for, for whatever reason, then please stay home. Uh, we do hope to continue being able to, to video the Mass and posting that on YouTube so, so you'll be able to continue to share, uh, to share that with us. Uh, as well, the parish office will also reopen next Wednesday on, on May 20th, again with the same, the same procedures and policies and all of that. Um, and in the meantime, of course, you can still get in touch with us. Our office staff is still working from home and, uh, and we're, we'll, we'll, we're still here to help you. Uh, a couple other reminders, uh, Catholic Charities uh, has created an uh, emergency assistance fund to help with, uh, with parishioners, with people who have been affected uh, by the pandemic. So if you've lost your job or lost income and aren't able to, uh, aren't able to cover your bills, uh, you can get in touch with me or Father Jeff or, some, or, or Patty at the office, and we can help you to uh, apply for that assistance. Um, and also, we're just uh, grateful for everyone who has 
uh, continued to contribute to St. Boniface through their, their stewardship contributions, uh, through mailing in their envelopes, or through giving online. We're really very grateful. That's been a big help for us uh, to be able to uh, to be able to kind of continue on on, on good uh, financial ground uh, during these during these difficult times. Uh, also, want to ish, uh, give a special congratulations to all the all those who are graduating from Nativity Academy, all the eighth graders. Uh, I think their graduation uh, was originally scheduled for this week, so I'm not sure exactly how they've adjusted uh, uh, their plans, but I know. Uh, I know they will be graduating soon, and, and we're really proud of them and, and of the faculty and, and all of the, uh, the effort and the hard work that everyone has put in during these really unusual circumstances. And finally, uh, on, a, on a sad note, I want to ask you to, uh, to please pray for uh, the repose of the souls of Al Pepper and Joyce Trott, uh, who, each, uh, both, who both passed away uh, during the past week. Uh, Joyce just passed away. Uh, early yesterday morning. So for, for Pat and for Jean, for all their families um, who are, are missing them and, and grieving them and, and preparing for, uh, to make arrangements, um, we're praying for you. And, uh, and I ask, ask all of you to, to continue to, to lift, lift those families up in prayer during this difficult time. And I think that's about it. Um, of course, we're, I'm very grateful. I'm, I'm mindful this is the last Sunday that we're doing Mass like this. I can't wait till next week to be able to look out and actually see faces <laughs> out in the pews again. Um, so I, I want to do, especially thank Charles and Ryan and Deacon Scott and Deacons Mark and Greg from St. Patrick who have, uh, who have been a big help to, to help you know, to allow us to continue to celebrate Mass and continue to allow you to participate uh, to participate through the video. And uh, like I said, I hope uh, that I will see, uh, actually Father Jeff will see you next week, uh, and then I'll see you in two weeks uh, here in person at St. Boniface. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. You are sent to glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So